Okay, now in this lecture, let's start composing our lambdas, connect them to API Gateway, and start sending test data to our web host on S3. So the first thing I want to do, again, in IoT, I talk about this a lot, it's kind of backwards. I want to make some lambdas first before we link them in WebSockets and API Gateway. And the reason I need to do that is just the way API Gateway works. Normally, it would make more sense to pit the routes first in API Gateway and then connect them with Lambda. So I'm going to have two lambdas. And again, if you've seen other videos, these are very common lambdas you'll see, but they're all done a little bit differently. So I'm going to create a function. And in my first lambda, I'm going to do it in Node. And the other lambda, I'm actually going to use Python. So I'm going to say this one, we'll call this one connection. It really doesn't matter what we call our lambda. What matters is what we call our API gateway route. So that's important to remember. So go ahead and create this function. And then we're going to put in our code, but for now, I'm not even going to put in code. I'm just going to use the default code. So there it goes. It created our Lambda, and I'm just going to leave this like this. And then I'm going to create our second function, which is going to be our send message function. So I'll go ahead and create this, and this one will be called send message. I can actually call it like send IoT payload. Maybe that would be cooler. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Because that's more accurate what it's doing. The actual route key in API Gateway is going to be called message. But that's just a typical standard. This one I'm going to do in Python. And I really do prefer Python as the years go by for these lambdas over Node. But I still use Node if I'm dealing with asynchronous calling websites and things like this. But normally I'm liking to use Python a lot more. It's just easier as a procedural language than dealing with asynchronous language like Node if I don't have to. Obviously, it's necessary when you deal with web applications. Okay, and I'm just going to leave the default Python in for now that I have created both functions, and that'll be fine. I'm going to create a new tab here by just duplicating this, and now I'm going to go to API Gateway and compose my API. So API, API Gateway. Create API, and I'm going to create a WebSocket API. Very cool. So let's call this just WebSocket and give it some anomalous name that doesn't matter. How about that? It makes no difference. So the typical one this is request body action. We'll stay with that standard. Just make sure when you follow along and do this, you spell it right. Because one time I didn't, and that caused all kinds of problems. So go ahead and next. Okay, so normally people are going to use all of these because they're easy to use. I'm going to try to keep this as the world's simplest asynchronous WebSock to start. So the only two I care about now are connection. And you don't get a choice on that with that dollar sign. It's a macro that we don't have a choice to use the keyword connect, and that's fine. And I'm going to add a custom one called message, and that's the standard. And message is the route key that we're going to connect with our browser that we're going to send our IoT data payloads through. So this is going to be our most important Lambda. So let's go ahead next, now that we have our two route keys, the macro connect and our custom route key called message. And now, and this is why I had to do Lambda first, it's going to ask us integration type. And both of these are going to be connected to our Lambdas that we just made. Our connection Lambda is, of course, going to be that Lambda called connection that we just composed. And this message one is going to be that send IoT payload one we just composed. There, I found it. Good for me. All right, next. And we'll leave this as called production. It really doesn't matter what we call this, except when we get our WebSocket links, that'll be in the extension. So just keep it as production. That's fine. It'll ask us to review everything. I've certainly done this enough, so it should be okay to create and deploy. And it's going to go ahead and deploy this. And what we want to do is keep note of our WebSocket and HTTP connection for our routes. So where we're going to find that is stages. So here we've activated connect and message. And if we go to stages, production stage, we're going to need both these. So normally you just copy these down. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to leave this page resident and keep it open. And now we can go back to our lambdas and put in our code. OK, and to get back to our lambdas, it's just kind of easier to go to routes. And I'll start with my connect lambda. And it's going to show this as a Lambda proxy integration. And I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. And that's my connection Lambda that I just created. And then we're going to alter it. And this Lambda is actually going to be quite simple. So we just left the default code in here. And we're not going to do much different. In fact, I'm going to leave this basic response. We don't need to play with that. So I'm just going to paste and copy this code in here. 
What this code is going to basically do is when it connects to our browser, it's going to send in that big blob of HTTP data the website sends to us. We're going to use CloudWatch just to grab the connection ID. So with that incoming event, it's event, then a subcategory of request context, and then connection ID is held in there. I'm going to print the whole event so you can see the big blob of data that comes in from the browser, but we only need this connection ID. Now, again, for these next few lectures, we're going to manually enter the connection ID, but I'm going to fix that problem to make it more sophisticated with internal MQTT messaging between lambdas. So that's going to be a lot cooler. So hang on for that in later lectures. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy that. So it saves and go ahead to my next Lambda. So come back here to API Gateway, go to Routes, and this is my message route. Again, Lambda proxy integration, right click this function we just made, open this up in a new tab. And now I'm going to put a little bit more complicated function in Python, and I'm going to show you what this one does. And in the next few lectures down the road, this is going to get even more complicated to automate our process, but that's okay. So here's my Lambda function in Python. Go ahead and copy and paste that in there. Boom. Okay, so what is this one going to do? This one also, just like the previous one, is going to bring in the event. But for this one, I need to keep hold of the connection ID. So once we get our connection ID from that first Lambda function, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right in here. And then the other thing we need is that HTTP endpoint, because this is going to be an internal messenger. So that's why it needs to be that HTTP endpoint. So let's go ahead and grab that. Again, go back to stages, production. And now this is the one I need. I'm going to go ahead. I don't need that end. It says at connections. So go ahead and copy that. And over here and paste it in here. Boom, paste. And go ahead and deploy that. So this is correct to have the HTTPS here. So now we're ready to go to get our connection ID by connecting it to our web browser. So I'm running out of time in this lecture, but in the next lecture, I'll set up that web browser with some super, super basic code, show you how to put that connection ID in here, then start sending data to the website, and then we'll go on from there.